Anyman Maths, exercise 10, question 7. Right, the diagram drawn again, I've duplicated it here. So it says it gives you three points. It tells you that the perpendicular bisector, I've not drawn it, drawn it very well, the perpendicular bisector of AB, in other words, the line that goes through AB, hitting it in the middle and at right angles, has this equation. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of this line segment BC. So, 7 for part A. For BC, well, the perpendicular bisector is going to pass through the middle at right angles. So that means I'll need the midpoint. Maybe I'll give it a name here. I'll call it mid midpoint M. So, M is going to be the midpoint of BC which means that M is going to have the average of their coordinates. So it's going to be 3 and 6 averaged, 3 plus 6 over 2, and 3 and 2 averaged, 3 plus 2 over 2. So M is going to be the point, I'll just leave it as 9 upon 2 and 5 upon 2, since there's probably going to be multiplications involved later on. Right, so to get the equation of the perpendicular bisector, I need two things. I need a point on it, I've got that now, and I need its gradient. Well, you get its gradient by reference to the line BC. So the gradient of the line segment BC is going to be the difference in Y over the difference in X. You can write Y2 over Y1, etc. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, if you like. So that's going to be the difference in the Y coordinates. 2 take away 3. In the same order, 6 take away 3. If there's any confusion because there's lots of points, you can always put it beside it. You can say, well, BC is going to be 3, 3, going to 6, 2. And then you've got them referenced beside you, 2 take away 3, 6 take away 3. But we won't be doing that here, just now. So that's going to be negative 1 upon 3, negative a third. Which means that the gradient that you're looking for, I've not actually got a name for it, so I'll just say the perpendicular gradient, is going to be the negative of the reciprocal. Make it negative, turn upside down, the perpendicular one is going to be 3, because it has to multiply to give negative 1. Right, now we can get the line that's required. I'll just call it the line. So the line that's required then, y minus b is mx minus a, using that finder equation, the equation which will form the line. You can always take a note if you like. M's 3, and the point I'm going to use, unfortunately, is 9 upon 2, 5 upon 2. So y minus the y coordinate, y minus 5 upon 2, is 3 times the x coordinate. Uh, x minus the x coordinate, minus 9 upon 2. It's not going to be as bad as it looks, because these 2's will cancel when they come over. So y is going to equal 3x, but I'll spell this one out, because it's going to be minus 27 upon 2, plus 5 upon 2. That will be minus 22 upon 2, and 22 upon 2 is 11, so I've worked out quite nicely. So y is going to equal 3x minus 11. In fact, I'll call that 2, because I've already got a name for the first one there, but that's in the second part. Right, second part. Find the centre of the circle which passes through the points A, B and C, and there's the circle drawn in. It was drawn in to begin with anyway. Right, now, at this point then, well that means that AB and BC are chords of the circle. Lines that join two points in circumference. And, since a circle has symmetry, any diameter of a, of a circle must bisect the chord at right angles. Which means these perpendicular bisectors that you found of the chords will, well it's not drawn very well, intersect at the centre of the circle. Oh, C is used already. We'll just call that N then. We'll intersect at the centre of the circle. So what I've got, that first chord had a perpendicular bisector, whoops, which read Y plus 2X equals 4. We'll call that 1. The second one's got this equation, so where they intersect will be the centre of the circle. So I can find N by doing this. Substitute whichever way around, what's well, going to be 2 into 1 then, isn't it? Because that's fit for substitution. So substitute 2 in 1. That means I'm going to write out equation 1 this time. Or as, although when, as soon as I see y, I'm going to replace it. So instead of y, I'm going to write 3x minus 11, and then continue 2 plus 2x equals 4. Well, that's easy enough. So that's 5x minus 11 equals that. So take the 11 over, 5x equals 15, which means x equals 3. So it should be at 3. Oh, that's directly below B. And then 
substitute x equals 3 into whichever one's more convenient. Well, that's the one that reads y directly, so I'll substitute it in 2. So 2 is going to read this thing. y equals 3 times 3 minus 11. So it's going to be 9 minus 11, that's going to be negative 2. So that means for this circle, its centre, which I've called n, is going to be 3, negative 2. That's question 7.